Well, last fall, we conducted our first ever viewer survey, and we had a lot of suggestions on giving some segments that dealt with hobby greenhouses. Well, the good folks at Farm Hostel Incorporated out of Salem, Oregon, donated a hobby greenhouse just for that purpose. Now, the person responsible for this kit is our studio grounds manager, Alan Jobs. And Alan, it looks great, it really does. About how long did it take you to put this together? Oh, it's take, taken about a week of me and another person to put this together. Okay. Tell us a little bit of what a homeowner or viewer should think about before selecting a hobby greenhouse. Maybe a little bit about site or something like that. Well, first of all is, is of course, dollar amount. You know, figure out what you want to spend for, for a hobby greenhouse and, and budget for it. And then select the site. Uh, here we're located on our zoysia grass, just south of our pine trees and, and pecan trees. And uh, we're located where we can get full sun both in the summer and in the winter. And we're located where we can uh, um, cover it with uh, shade cloth and close to our barn and access to, to our pots and other stuff. Now, Alan, one thing you did that saved us a little bit of money later on was on our zoysia grass, you did what? Well, we cut it out with the sod cover, cutter, uh, the dimensions of our greenhouse, because zoysia grass is hard to establish in, so we just cut it up in sod pieces and set it off to the side that we'll set later. Okay, well, good. Tell us about the size of greenhouse we've got here, a little bit about the style and maybe some of the parts of putting it together. Well, what Farm Wholesale Inc. donated to us was a, a 16 foot wide, 8 foot in depth, and 8 foot tall. And it's just essentially two lean-to greenhouses that are butted up together and covered with corrugated plastic. Okay. And the corrugated plastic, show us some of the pieces that you've got here. Well, what we have is, is it's simply a, a thin film of, of plastic with some supports in the center. Uh, it resembles a lot like uh, cardboard is what it reminds me of. Uh -huh. uh, it has a UV protectant on it, so it doesn't break down as quick. Okay. What else uh, as far as the frame goes? Well, the frame is, is made out of, out of PVC for the arch wall and most of the other supports. But the base frame and the upright and the hanging rods that, that keep the thing square has a steel support put through this PVC. And this PVC has to be especially uh, extruded to so that you can slide that steel support in compared to what you'd buy at a at a farm at a farm store or a hardware store that would have a thicker wall for running water lines and then it's simply put together with with PVC glue and regular PVC fitting well boy when we got all of the boxes and pieces <laughs> in it looked like it was going to be quite a chore but it's really turned out nice now another thing, Alan, that we did with ours is hook up some lines to it. Tell us a little bit about what happened there. Well, we, uh, we were running gas to our, our barn out here, and we decided to go ahead and run gra gas over to our greenhouse because it's the most uh, cost-effective way to heat any type of greenhouse is gas. And then the same trench, we also ran electrical line through it. Uh, so we've got electricity out here and gas. And the next thing that we have to do is put water out to it. Okay. Now, one thing that you put a lot of time on was the foundation. Tell us a little bit about what you did with the foundation. Well, simply, we, uh, after we uh, cut the zoysia grass out and found us a good level area, we, uh, we set four by fours into the ground, two feet deep, and concreted it in. We wanted a good base for Oklahoma winds and tornadoes that might come through. And then we, uh, put a plastic covering um, underneath and, and covered it with um, screening, gravel screening, which you can find at most sand and gravel places in, in Oklahoma. Okay. And then after we had the foundation and the lines and everything, you got the frame constructed. What yeah. did you do then? Yeah, we constructed the frame and had the pieces all put together and glued. And then we set it on, onto the foundation and, and bolted it down to the 4 by 4s here and squared everything up before we started putting the sheeting in. I thought that was very critical is to have everything square and, and plumb. Okay, and then you just covered it with the sheeting here and, and this is kind of the finished product. Now, Alan, tell us about the bottom line, so to speak. <laughs> what, what can a person expect on the cost of a project like this? Well, uh, 
it ran a little more than what we anticipated. You can get into uh, a little extra expense by the foundation. It cost us about $100 for the gravel and the 4x4 post. Uh, it ran uh, about $1,100 for the greenhouse. Which really isn't too bad for no. the greenhouse itself. And I guess they have smaller kits even as low as, what, 300 bucks. But Yeah, $310 uh, and 450 are the smallest greenhouses that they have. And then the biggest cost for us, I guess, was the line, putting the gas mm -hmm. in, too. Yeah, so what do we got total to put the greenhouse in? Fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars easy. Okay. Well, Alan, it couldn't have come at a better time. Of course, uh, it's really time for us to get into the greenhouse and start uh, with those vegetable transplants for the early spring. So, Alan, while you finish up here, I'm going to go inside and show them what it looks like there, and we're going to start some cool season transplants. Well, Keep up the good work. Okay. Well, as you can tell, we have just a little bit of work to go on the inside of the greenhouse, but we're real excited about it because it looks like it's got a lot of storage space and space to work and, and keep our plants. We've got a bench over here behind us and one on the opposite end that's about knee high. And then in the center, we've got a couple of benches that are a little bit easier to work on. And we've got another layer up above us where we can either put hanging baskets or some smaller plants or even storage if we need it. And of course, we still lack the utilities, and then things will be ready to go. And we're real excited about being able to bring you some segments in the hobby greenhouse. Now, it might be winter outside still, but if you're planning on growing some cool season vegetables in your spring garden next year, believe it or not, it's time to start those transplants, especially if you're going to grow them yourself. Now, the best thing for us to do to start out with this segment is to remind you what can be grown in early spring and what should be grown from transplants. And I'd like to give you a listing of some of the things and off to the side you'll notice that we've got the number of weeks that it takes to grow those transplants from seed to the time that you would put it outside. Now the easiest things to grow are cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, head lettuce, and kale. And again, those are all for transplants, and it takes anywhere from five to seven weeks. Now, indoors, sometimes it may take a little bit longer than that, depending upon the amount of light. And in some cases, it can take less time than that if they get too lengthy or leggy on you and they need to go outside. So that's why you're given a ballpark figure. Now of those, we'll be growing all of them with the exception of Brussels sprouts and kale in our early spring garden. Now if you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can also grow in Oklahoma from transplants celery, parsley, onions, and leeks, but those take anywhere from 8 to 10 weeks. Now as a general rule in Oklahoma, the best time to plant these cool season vegetables are anywhere between February 15th and March 15th, and where you live in the state is all dependent upon when you plant. If you're in the southern part of the state, you could plant around the 15th of February. The central part of Oklahoma, more around the end of February, the 1st of March. And of course, a panhandle in the northwestern area of the state, you need to wait till the middle of March, maybe sometimes even till the last part of March, to plant these early season transplants. Now today, we'll be planting some broccoli, which is a variety of green goliath, and we've tried this both in our fall and spring gardens, and we've had a lot of success. Now, remember to count back seven weeks of, for the broccoli from the day that you're going to plant, and we're going to be planting around the 15th of February, maybe a little bit earlier. So really, the 1st of January is when we need to get these transplants planted. So that would give you a little bit of time to shop around in some of the mail order catalogs that will be coming in, especially if it's things that you want to try that you can't get at the garden centers. But remember, a lot of the garden centers are still carrying some seed for transplants too. So it gives you a little bit of time to select that variety. But in the meantime, you also need to select which kind of containers that you're going to use. Now, we're all familiar with the four or six packs that you can get transplants in, and you can keep those and reuse them, but don't forget to clean them out and sterilize them with a little bit of Clorox water, which is really the best thing you can use, because you can carry over some pathogens, and the seedlings are very susceptible at that time. Now, you can also get the Jiffy 7s, and we've got one soaking here, 
And if you'll put them in warm water, they'll expand a little bit more. But this one is starting to. And again, it's just compressed peat moss with a little bit of netting over it that you can plant the seed into directly. And then once they're ready to go out into the garden, you just plant the entire thing. So those are available. It's sometimes a little bit expensive, depending on what you want to use and the number of plants. And then there's also the peat cups. And for a lot of our cuttings and other warm season vegetables and things where we're going to have a lot of numbers, we'll be planting in these directly because, again, we're only planting one step, and then we'll plant the entire cup out into the garden. But a lot of individuals like to start in little trays like this or even a big tray that we have to carry these in and they can just plant a row of seed and then the problem with that is though that you have to transplant them once again and we're going to show you how to do that now after you've got the the plant seed and the containers don't forget about the soil and i've got two different examples here this one on my right uh, is perlite and peat moss mixed together and it's very coarse and it's great for containers but if you've got large containers I would put this in the bottom and then try to get something a little bit finer which here we've got vermiculite and a little bit of peat moss ground up but the thing to remember is you need sterilized soil that's light so it doesn't hold a lot of water but also it doesn't have any disease or insect problems that again would attack the very uh, volatile seedlings at that time so we're going to use in this tray the one with the vermiculite and we don't want to fill up the entire tray because we need to leave a little bit of room at the top to hold moisture and uh, we'll tap that down and then we'll just put a couple of rows here and there are several ways you can do it with the ruler uh, with your finger however you'd like to do it just about a quarter of an inch deep we're planting them a little bit shallower than we would if we were doing it out in the garden and then the seed we'll just drop those right in the row now remember you'll have to thin these out a little bit or transplant them again into another container cover them up lightly and then again tap it and pack it down and don't forget to water them in at this stage and because that's so delicate and fine we're going to use a mister versus a heavy amount of water because we could wash the seed or dislodge them once you get it watered in well and again don't be afraid to soak it real well this first time because that peat moss is very dry and hard to get soaked up uh, or absorbed with water in an indoor situation a lot of people will use paper cups whatever you decide to use try to keep as much humidity in them as you can now these are just the right size that we can set them in a ziploc bag and keep those in there and not have to water them again until the seeds germinate and that's really a neat thing to do and that's why we didn't put the soil all the way to the top now if you don't want to use a ziploc bag some of the saran or handy wrap is also good to use and once the seeds start to germinate take them out of the bag but during this stage, a real neat idea is to put them on top of your refrigerator if you don't have a hobby greenhouse where they'll get a little bit of warmth. And again, as soon as they germinate, take them off the uh, refrigerator, take them out of the bag, and get them over to as much sunlight as you possibly can in a western or a southern exposed window. Now, we will still put ours and cover them with the plastic to get a lot of humidity, even in the hobby greenhouse. But inside it's real important that you get a little bit more warmth, uh, warmth and humidity now once they're coming up don't forget to transplant them keep them watered well don't overwater them in as much light as possible or they'll stretch on you and we're going to bring you some more segments showing you how you can start these out in the garden a lot earlier too so we want you to stick around and, and watch us and, and we're going to bring you some good segments on on that too